Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be looking at a new tool that's available in FreeCAD 0.21 and this is called the blend curve. It appears here. If you're familiar with the Curves Workbench then you'll be using the same tool in there and this is a simplified version of that tool. Let's take this model. We've just got an open V sketch that's been extruded and I want to take this shape and close it up. So I need to close the sides and the back. What the blend tool allows me to do is take these sides and create a curve across here. If I was trying to surface this in the surface workbench, then I would use something like the fill in surface, add an edge, and then I add all the edges. And then when I get to this edge that goes across here, well, I haven't got one. So this is where you would jump to somewhere like the part workbench and create, say, a ruled surface across here. But the trouble is we have no curvature or no customization with this ruled surface. I want a nice curved top. Let's come back over to the surface workbench. So we'll take this edge and then this edge. Now it's important to know which edges and in which sequence you've selected them. So it's gone from left to right and we'll create a blend curve. The blend curve has been created. And if we click on it, we get the options on the left hand side here. At the moment, what's happening is the blend curve is being taken at the end of this edge and at the top of this edge. And we can change those with the parameters here, the properties. So the start parameter will flip that edge is zero to one. And you can see that's been placed across the top. So that start parameter, if it was zero, will be placed at the bottom. See it there. If it was one, it'll be placed at the top. Anywhere in between, say 0.5, placed in the center there, 0.2, etc. The same with this side, the end parameter here. At the moment, it's naught. If I put 0.2, you can see it's been moved down here. One, be placed down the bottom. So this one needs to be zero and the start parameter of this one needs to be one to place them across the top. Now let's have a look at the curvature. If we look at this at the moment, you can see what slight curvature across here. That's because of the continuity. If I set the continuity to zero, then it's going to be straight on one side. I set the end continuity on this one to zero, we get a straight line. Let's click left. You can see that straight line is there. It's only because these edges are longer that it appears not straight. So what I'm gonna do is link up the start continuity with the end continuity by using the formula. And I'm gonna set the end to start continuity. Okay, so that means when I change the start and click off, it changes the end as well. Just for the demonstration, so I'm changing both at the same time. Let's do the same with the end size as well. So the end size, I'm gonna set that to start size. So if I change one and not the other, then we're gonna get curve this side and not the other side. So now I've done that, what I'll do is set the continuity to one. We can see that curvature has been applied. When we change the size, remember this continuity across both of these of one, let's increase the size to four. You can see that's increased in size there. Remember the end size has changed as well. So I'm gonna work my way down. Let's bring the end start size up to six and work my way down five, four, three, two, one, and zero. And you can see what happens there. That's changed the continuity now. So I'm at a start size of five and start and end continuity of two, three, four, five, six, and working our way down three, two, one, zero, you can see how that changes. 
increasing the size and you can see how we can affect that curvature there. If we bring the start size down to a minus figure, so minus two, we're gonna start curving inwards. And if I sever the link between the end size and the start size from the formula and increase this one to two and this one to minus two, then we start getting an S curve. It's important to remember if you had different surfaces so if we went over to the part and created two cubes so we have these two cubes in here right click transform then these would act differently the start and end they either be minus or plus depending on which one we've picked so i'm going to control click both of these first of all when we're over the surface workbench and use the blend curve and you can see we've added it to, to the bottom of there we've already got an s so something's changed so one is at one there and the other one is at one but we can see we've got an s curve so i've set this one to minus one and we started getting the curve going in the right place so one's got to be minus one and the other one's got to be one and we get that curve there so just watch out when you set these up, which way they're around. We can swap this curve to attach to say this point by coming in, finding which end, I believe it's this end. So the first one we selected is the start, the last one we selected is the end. And we'll clear that out using the button on the end, the end edge, and select this one and hit OK. Click off, that now connects to there. I can select that blend curve, come over to the end edge and set the parameter at the moment zero. So it's going to be at this end. I want to set it to this end. So set it to one and we curve up there. And we can play with how these are attached. So I want to attach on the top and I want the start size to be this way. And the end size at the moment is one, go up. You can see it's curving the wrong way, so let's curve it the other way. And curve it like so. Let's delete this and show you where this comes in handy. So I want to close the surfaces of this shape, getting back to this shape. Select one side, select the other, control select. Working from left to right from this viewpoint use the blend curve. The blend curve has been added here, across here. Change either start or end parameter and go for start and decide on the curvature. I'm gonna go for continuity of two and a start size of two as well across both of them. Now we need to do on the same on the other side working from again left side control click the right side important to go this way otherwise it can destroy our surface that goes across there it will bow tie and we add the blend curve again changing the parameters of that blend curve this one here has been added start parameter of one and we can change the start size if we want the same. Now we can add our surface against here. I'm going to use a filling surface, add edge, and now I can work around my edges. This one, this one, and then the blend curve. We get a nice surface. And we're starting to close these up again using the filling surface. And this one, this one, and the other side. Where is it? This one here. Close those up. Okay, and now we go across the top. Now, sometimes you have to change the surface that you're using going across the top. If the filling surface doesn't work, start adding our edges, etc. And we can see, well, I can see this is going a bit haywire. This is not really working. Let's go to the other surface, the fill boundary curves, add edge, and this is working much better. So we can fill that. 
and hit OK. So now I've filled this surface. The other way we can do it, let's just hide these surfaces and just leave the blend curves and just pressing the spacebar on these is to use the section surface. And this is the same as a loft. So you click on it, add edge, this one and this one, and we get the section going across here. Now, because that's the same as the loft, the same rules apply. When we create a loft, we have to be careful. For instance, if we create a pipe, we've got an inner sketch and an outer sketch. We sketch the inner first and then sketch the outer. Inner ring first, outer ring first. The next profile, we follow the same procedure, inner ring and outer ring. It's the same with the blend curve for this surface. The section surface is a loft. Because if I go back, we'll leave this blend curve here and delete this one and bring back our extrude, pressing the space bar on that. I worked from left to right from this viewpoint. Let's work from right to left. So to those there, blend curve. And click on the blend curve. We can see that already it's looking different. And we need the, let's go for the start parameter of one. We can see that hasn't worked. Let's zero that back out and go for the end parameter of one. And we've got that there. It's curving downwards. So we can see a difference already. So end size is minus two. Start size is minus two. Now when we add the section, add edge, one and two, it will bow tie in the middle. So this is the reason why you have to keep track of the order that you've selected those edges in if you're using a lofting type feature for a surface like this one. I hope that's helped explain the blend curve. New tool in 0.21 and let's hope we see more of these tools come over from other workbenches to make this workbench so much more powerful out of the box. I hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you again soon. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.